Mr. Speaker, we have an announcement starting with our left. Uh, can I make a statement? Sure. Uh, I hope the Board of Ed can amicably resolve the privatization issue. I'm not in favor of it, and I think the money should be spent on educational issues. And it could be very costly uh, for the taxpayers to pursue privatization. So, and, uh, I think, Ed, Ed Kawicki, you mentioned why we couldn't vote to, uh, on Calvin Brown's issue. Do you remember that? I didn't find that. Huh? <coughs> Councilman, I don't think uh, I gave uh, an opinion on whether you could vote or not. I think there was a motion that had been made, and that's what I uh, commented on, that it was an appropriate motion. Oh, okay. All right. Well, anyway, that, that was the reason why we didn't vote on it. But anyway, uh, I, like I said, I'm, I'm not in favor of privatization, and I hope it can be resolved. I would be remiss if I didn't correct that misinformation. What happened at the last council meeting was I brought up a resolution and it was seconded, but before a vote could take place on that resolution, Councilor Martin moved to table it indefinitely, which became the permanent motion, and then Councilors Meisnikowski, Martin, Carlson, and the mayor voted to table indefinitely. If that had not happened, they could have voted on the resolution. They could have voted to support the resolution, not support the resolution. That would have been up to them. But that did not happen. Instead, they voted to table indefinitely, which means they did not take a stand at all. I'm happy to see my distinguished colleague from the 2nd District speak up again tonight the way he did during the campaign, but his statement following was inaccurate. The Corporation Council's office only commented that Councillor Martin's motion to table indefinitely was technically correct. And technically it was a, a motion that he was able to make. He did. And again, for the record, and for all of the people here tonight, since we had so many people come out and comment on it, Councillor Meisnikowski, Councillor Martin, Councillor Carlson, and the mayor voted to table indefinitely, not take a stand one way or the other. That's all. Vote on it again. Okay. No, it's it's again. Her I do have one that I'd like to read from the uh, police department. On Sunday, August 17th, the Bristol Half Marathon and Relay for Fisher House will be taking place in Bristol. The race will begin at 7.30 in the morning and last approximately three hours. It will begin and end at Health Trek located at 842 Clark Avenue. Uh, police officers and volunteers will be stationed along the route providing safety and traffic control for the participants. As runners will be in the roadway, motorists traveling through the area should use caution and be prepared to stop. And that's all for announcements for me. Uh, I have a couple. The first being uh, a reminder that the West End Festival, the long-awaited West End Festival, is this Saturday all day in Rockwell Park. Uh, secondly, a reminder that our annual Farmer's Market is open on Wednesdays and Saturdays here in Bristol at the Bristol Commons parking lot. Please support uh, local uh, farmers and growers. And lastly, please consider giving blood this summer if you can. Uh, blood donations are very low in summertime months and it can you know, be a problem if someone is in need. And so if anyone is able to give blood, uh, obviously call the, Bristol, uh, call the Red Cross and um, they will notify you of blood mobiles all over our area. Thanks. Uh, as school starts again, uh, I just want to thank the uh, United Way for their work in getting the Backpacks for the Kids project going. Uh, other groups and organizations are doing it, including Gloria Day Church, which is going to be uh, providing backpacks for local youth, about 200 backpacks they're aiming for this year. And it's, uh, they uh, raise, their, raise their funds and send them all by the kids at the uh, church. Um, I want to say something about the, the issue with the uh, school lunch and the uh, contract disputes. The problem that I saw and the reason I 
wanted to squash the motion put forth by Councilman Brown is because the city, because of the uh, handling of the contracts, you have two valid contracts, both signed by, both adopted by the Board of Education. We have a legal mess. Uh, Councilman Brown's met a resolution unfortunately would just create more fodder for a court case on behalf of Whitson's. Uh, personally, I would have gone ahead with only the, the um, unions. Uh, they made the concessions that were necessary and, they sh and that should have happened and I, and I agreed with that. Unfortunately, now we're in a tight situation. Uh, I don't want to say too much more than that. This year. Uh, it's going to be a tough in court. I, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to be dealing with more than just just the individual lunch ladies and that um, issue. It's going to be Whitson's is also certainly wide open to us. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, Mayor, I have two brief items. The first is just to make everyone aware that another closely watched issue in the community, the uh, Bristol Hospital acquisition by tenant. There is a certificate of need uh, determination that that meeting is scheduled for tomorrow night, Thursday, August 14th at 6 p.m. in the Hughes Auditorium at Bristol Hospital. Um, at that point, the state is hearing the um, description of the proposal, and I do believe that there is... Um, a tightly regulated public speaking portion and I would encourage anyone who's following this issue who may be interested to get there early both for parking issues as well as for I think there's um, yeah, limited seating so that's tomorrow night at the hospital uh, and then I also just wanted to take a moment on a lighter note to talk about the fact that from a perspective of summer activities we've had quite a successful summer for baseball uh, for those of you who are local, you know that we've had two regional tournaments come to Mixed Street. The girls were here at the end of July, and we just concluded the Little League region for um, boys baseball. And at the same time, we had our Bristol team that comprised the senior Little League go to Bangor, Maine, and are currently playing in the World Series there. I believe they're one and two, not sure what happened today, but that is the first time that that level of Little League has gone on and played at that level, which I think is a great testament to the fact that we, in fact, have a great program here. That senior team comprises players from all three of our little leagues, so it's a great collaborative effort. And I also want to announce that baseball is not over, even though the tournaments have left, and McCabe Waters, which is in the West End, will be hosting the City Series for our 12-year-old little leagues. That will take place starting Monday the 18th, and I encourage all of you to come down and watch some great baseball, but also come through the West End, because I think those of you who may not have been on that side of town in a while will be surprised to see the difference that has been happening just in the past six months. Thank you. And I have one announcement. Monday coming up, August 18th, we'll be having a special city council meeting. Gorman & York, which is the company that I hired to do an independent review analysis of Depot Square, will give a public presentation to the mayor, the council, and the BDDC. This will be a public meeting, uh, so I urge everyone to come and watch, see what they have to say. Then I look forward to hearing Renaissance's um, response to that in, in future times. Meeting will begin six o'clock in this room. So um, that's all I have on that. Somebody asked me about that. Who was it? I don't know. What time? Oh, it's Jane. Six o'clock. Okay, that's all we have for announcements. Reports and community reports. I don't know, As usual, the. Uh, Real Estate Committee is busy. That motion to bring forward. I hereby move that the City of Bristol seek requests for the proposals for disposition of property owned by the City known as 95 Union Street on Map 31 of the Bristol Assessor's Office. That the purchasing agent be authorized to request proposals and they send out a press release in addition to legal notices and update the City website. I further move this matter be referred to Corporation Council to prepare for prepare and or review any necessary documents. I further move the mayor or acting mayor be authorized to execute any necessary documents to effectuate the same. Second. Main second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes. Item B. Uh, 
I hereby move that the City of Bristol seek requests for proposals for the disposition of property owned by the City, known as 3 North Street, Bingham School, on Map 22 of the Bristol Assessor's Office, and that the purchasing agent be authorized to request proposals and that he send out a press release in addition to the legal notices and update the City website. I further move that this matter be referred to the Corporation Council to prepare and or review any necessary documents. I further move that the Mayor or Acting Mayor be authorized to execute any necessary documents to effectuate the same. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed motion passes. Item C. I hereby move that the City of Bristol seek requests for proposals for the disposition of property owned by the City known as 122 Park Street, O'Connell School, on Map 22 of the Bristol Assessor's Office, and that the purchasing agent be authorized to request proposals and that he send out a press release in addition to the legal notices and update the city website. I further move that this matter be referred to the Corporation Council to prepare and or review any necessary documents. I further move that the mayor or acting mayor be authorized to execute any necessary documents to effectuate the same. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. One more to bring up. Uh, I hereby move to grant the West End Association permission to use a portion of Depot Square and O'Connell School to serve as an off-site parking area for the Rockwell Park Summer Festival on Saturday, August 16, 2014, provided that all insurance requirements are met. I further move this matter be referred to the Department of Public Works to determine the appropriate location of the parking area on Depot Square. I further move this matter be referred to Corporation Council's Office for Insurance Compliance. I further move the mayor or acting mayor be authorized to execute any necessary documents to effectuate the same. Second. The motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Any other committee reports there, my friend? Yeah, just a quick bit of business from the library. So everybody knows that Friday wraps up the summer reading programs for young people and adults at the Bristol Public Library. And tomorrow, if anybody's interested, John Root will be playing some music uh, and hanging out with the kids at the main library at 1 p.m. And Man Ross at 6.30, but it's open to the public, so anybody can come and hang out. And that's it for me. Not for me. Yeah, I have a brief code enforcement update for the council and the audience. Um, and most of you are aware that we've had a reopening um, of Wawang, which was the two Divinity Street building that had come under um, multiple code enforcement uh, compliance issues over the winter. So for the last six months, that owner has been working on those issues and he was recently allowed to reopen. Uh, right now, across the street, to Divinity Street is also closed due to safety and compliance issues, so there's a lot of focused activity in the West End. Uh, in the last month, the building department alone has added 33 additional complaints to their inspection schedule, and of those, 12 are in the West End area, or closely adjacent to the center. Uh, the part-time code enforcement officer has addressed over 70 locations for graffiti, some of which he has cleaned himself, some of which the property owners are in compliance with, and the remaining being that they are being issued orders. Uh, another issue that's come up as part of some of the um, visual graffiti, as well as some of the other problems that have popped up in the past probably three or four years, have been the drop boxes that are really in lots of parking lots. Those are not regulated by the city. The ordinance committee created an ordinance and there are three companies that are being worked with to determine whether they're placed in the appropriate places, whether they need to be moved, and whether they're not registered at all. Two companies are working with the city, the third has been non-responsive, and those boxes will most likely be removed. From a foreclosure standpoint, there have been 35 additional this last month, uh, 18 in the second district, 12 in the third district, and five in the northeast corner in the first district. Uh, many of these properties languish for years once foreclosed upon if the bank has um, title to them. And one of the issues that code enforcement has been talking about is how to tackle this problem of empty and vacant foreclosed properties that banks are unwilling to move on, probably due to the differentiation of value and their portfolio amount. Uh, Frank Nicastro, the state representative for the 79th district, put me in contact with uh, the State Banking Commission General Council, and we are hoping to have some type of policy for all of you to talk about for um, us as a city to address some of those issues and maybe move those properties at a faster rate due to the fact that if unmaintained, they become blighted properties themselves. One additional issue that we have been facing is, in addition to our aggressive efforts, 
we're also getting calls from realtors who are trying to sell properties that are listed um, unrelated to the properties that we're dealing with but are becoming a problem for them because we're taking such an aggressive stance. Buildings are being boarded, things are being posted, and they're, ha they're trying to sell properties in these same neighborhoods. So we need to find a middle ground with some of these realtors and have them help us with this quest and help us identify those properties as well. The last thing I'd like to talk about is another one of those ancillary issues from code enforcement that many of you are familiar with some of our issues that have developed in the summer. Uh, homelessness becomes an issue of code enforcement when condemnations and relocations occur and the state aid and or what we as a city are required under relocation ends and yet these tenants have not yet found a place. Uh, 47 Stern Street is an example of a place that absolutely had to be condemned. Uh, living conditions were just abysmal and I think that it's one of those situations where what is the worst evil having people be homeless or having them live in conditions like that and sometimes unfortunately in the case of 47 Stern Street it was pretty much a toss up. Uh, out of those people, six of them or six units of, of living people um, as of last week were still homeless. Uh, this week we are down to five. But it is a very real issue that some of our policies are forcing people to um, not have a lot of choices once their aid runs out. And this becomes one of the cycle issues of what some of the demographic is that we're dealing with. When people um, are hard to employ, can't be employed, are disabled, cannot break the cycle of poverty, uh, have utility-backed payments that they have not paid in the, in the past that have affected their credit, or any of those other issues, we as a community are faced with the issue of what to do with them. And we, when our responsibility runs out, oftentimes they are left to be on the street. Uh, the response from community services and social services is I think the best that they can do, but with the consolidation of continuum of care, all of you need to be aware that the situation now is if you're homeless, you are categorized as literally homeless, chronically homeless, or imminently homeless. And your recourse is to call 211. And it may take between four to six weeks for you to get an appointment with a caseworker. So statewide, not just Bristol, there is this entire response to homelessness that I think is starting to be inadequate. And here in Bristol, with our code enforcement efforts, we may be slightly contributing to some of that burden. I just wanted everyone to be aware of it and understand that some of the community service issues that we're dealing with go beyond the city budget. And so anyone who has the opportunity to you know, contribute in any way or have extra resources and or things that they could donate, I would encourage you to touch base with the Department of Youth and Community Services. Even if it's cleaning out your closets for clothes that you've never worn or toiletries, we are literally helping these people from the bottom up in order to try to get them into better situations. So I think that, again, that's kind of a larger global issue with code enforcement, but it's one that I think it's, it's an important one to understand. Um, I probably used all my time on that report, but I did also want to mention quickly that the Memorial Boulevard effort is underway. Um, very, very substantive issues coming out of that committee. Our historic register nomination is under review. We've added meeting dates because we are still very, uh, very interested in having this back to the council by the mid-fall, end of fall, so that it could be considered by us as a group, but also go to the Board of Finance if we were to be part of next year's budget. Uh, we're looking to gauge interest in the building to see if there's actually more of a, a bent toward um, rental space for artists or if there's need and interest for small offices. Uh, all of that is something that we have to put together as we evaluate the cost, the cost of the building and how it could eventually be self-sustaining. Um, we are doing a comparison on the theater side because most people understand that the theater is a gem. So we are doing a cost comparison as well as a management comparison of six other like-sized theaters and that is actually progressing very well. We had a theater professional walkthrough last week and that was um, very beneficial for us as far as putting some costs together. Uh, one of our commissioners is the chair of the board of finance who's working with us on some of the fundraising issues and some of the public and private issues that we have to um, look at that are hopefully something that we can put into play as well. And hopefully everyone is getting the minutes that we leave every month and for the public we do have a specific website where all of our documents are there as well as some other planning documents that we have and I encourage everyone to really stay on top of that because I think that is one of the projects that we as a community can definitely uh, support as a whole and I think it's something that adjacent to downtown as well as the emphasis on business as well as arts and culture will be a real gem for downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one thing that I should have said under announcements was that I had a nice meeting with Senator Blumenthal last week. Um, 
he came into town, he called me up, we, had, we met in my office, then we went for a walk downtown. Uh, but we did talk about bringing in some funding for the realignment of West End, uh, which I've been currently working on this term, as well as uh, possibly some development money, if any, for Depot Square. So we had a, we met for about a little bit over an hour. Uh, so we're going not only after state funds, but we're also looking at, at um, federal funds as well. So I should not mention that under the announcements. And I have no committee reports, so now we're unfinished business, starting my fur right. No. Uh, yeah, I no business, but unfinished business. I'm sorry, unfinished. No, no, I don't have no. 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 And I have no unfinished business, new business starting my fur right. I just wanted to mention something that had been brought up during public participation. Uh, the Bristol Planning Commission is currently updating its plan of development and conservation plan. Uh, it's for, uh, scheduled for 2015. I went to one of the sessions last week and I found it to be very interesting how they're going about tackling updating this document, which it hasn't been updated since the original one was adopted in 2000 and then there was an update in 2011. We are mandated by Connecticut General Statutes to establish procedures for adopting a plan and uh, we have a consultant that was hired that's working with the Planning Commission. Members of the public are encouraged to attend and all of their documents are online as well. What they're doing is taking it chapter by chapter and there is a variety of chapters. Some cover our historic resources, some cover transit, some cover downtown, but there's uh, all of those are available online and have a lot of great information in them for anybody who's interested. Sapo, I thought you might want to mention that the next meeting, which is regarding downtown, is on the third of next month. The next, the, the the next, next chapter. The there? next chapter of the planning and conservation meeting is um, in the meeting 3rd. room, September third, Wednesday. Yeah, and I believe there are meeting in one of the meeting rooms, and those are all open to the public. So the next chapter is on downtown on September third. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Councilman? Councilman, now no business. Now no business. Okay. <laughs> Uh, in my opinion, I know that as council members, we have some very important decisions to make. Uh, however, many of my constituents are clamoring to have a voice on Depot Square. Therefore, I feel we should listen to them and support them so a referendum can be heard. So I would encourage a referendum on Depot Square. Anything else? Thank you. Councilman. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed, motion passes. Item number nine. Appointments. Appointments. Uh, building Code of Appeals to appoint Philip Von Tella to replace Philip Ferraro, deceased, five year term, 818. So moved. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes. Zoning Board of Appeals to appoint Terry Parker to replace Michael. Corini resigned, unexpected term, 715. So moved. Motion so moved. made and seconded. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes. Carries in the audience. Welcome. Thank you. That's all we have there. Item number 10. Amendment of contract 2C1453. Muzzy Field. Oh, you're on it. Before I get started on that, could you also see the school readiness? Uh, actually, I missed another one. West Bristol Building Committee to appoint Michelle Lavasser to replace Mike Goddard, retired principal of West Bristol School. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? All right, Aye. I have opposed, motion passes. Please, can I have that list, please? Yeah, 
I just have to do new appointments, right? Not the current? Well, actually, every two years they're supposed to re-up, and what happens is that particular board has the tendency to kind of add, add people along the way, so I think we want to make sure that we've just reaffirmed in the council okay. the opportunity to reaffirm all the members. Okay, the school readiness members. Susan Clapp Moreau, co-chair. Dr. William, Bra Dr. William Brownstein, co-chair. Ann Goes, Catherine Clord, Henry Martin, Catherine Lombardi, Donna Osich, Kimberly Kermlich, Linda Rich, Valerie Pelletier, Valerie Toner, Linda Rosado, Marcy Arroyo, Rita Gerzanik, uh, Laura Watson, Catherine Pergaki, Shirley Anderson, and Patricia Tomasek. Second. Motion remains second. Discussion. Your Honor, I just have a question I was curious about. Does the council appointee to that board automatically have to be the uh, liaison to the board of ed? Or is it just that it can be any one of us? I Do you know? Historically, it's been because they liaison. work with the board of ed. No, it makes sense. I was just curious. Okay. I don't know if it has to be with that. No. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Now we'll do item number 10. Amendment of contract 2, 2C1453, Muzzy Field Improvement, Improvements with Martin Laviero Contractor Inc. For $13,024.64 for installation of under drain to handle groundwater, replacement of existing aging water service line, and extending to two six inch electrical conduits. Second. Motion made, sir. Good discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item number 11. Approval of amendment to contract 2P145, Aquabic River Flooding Study with URS Corporation for $19,500 to perform additional field survey and computer analysis and authorization for mayor Act and mayor to execute. Move to approve. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes. Item number 12. Authorization for Mayor Act and Mayor to execute amendment to existing sanitary sewer easement located on 80 Cove Road and you may want to include an additional referral to the uh, Corporation Council for review. Motion. 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 Second. Executive. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes. Item 13. Confirmation of revised fees for use of city transfer station as proposed by the Board of Public Works to become effective September 1st, 2014. Approval. Second. Motion made second. A discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Item 14. Resolution regarding approval to file and execute the Department of Transportation fiscal year 2015 DUI enforcement program grant for $201,800 and referral to Board of Finance and there is a resolution to read. We yeah, I can do that. Be it hereby resolved by the City Council of the City of Bristol, Connecticut that the filing of a grant application under the State Connecticut Department of Transportation fiscal year 2015 DUI enforcement program for $201,800 is hereby approved and that the Mayor, Kenneth B. Cock Kane, or Acting Mayor, and the Chief of Police, or Acting Chief of Police, are hereby authorized to execute such application and any and all other documents relating to this application funding grant, including but not limited to any final funding award grant documents. Be it for the result of this matter, be referred to Board of Finance for any necessary action. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. Resolution starting my far left. Yes. 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 Chair votes yes, motion passes. Item number 15. Resolution regarding approval to execute the school readiness and child daycare grant program and quality enhancement grant from the Office of Early Childhood for period July 1st, 2014 to June 30th, 2015, and authorization for mayor or acting mayor to execute. And there is a resolution to read, and you may want to include as an addition on the referral to the Board of Finance. And I can do that. Uh, be it hereby resolved by the City Council of the City of Bristol, Connecticut, that the Mayor, Kenneth B. Cockaine, or Acting Mayor, is hereby authorized to execute any and all documents relating to the application funding grant for the School Readiness and Child Daycare Grant Program and the Quality Enhancement Grant from the Office of Early Childhood for the period of July 1, 2014 to June 30, 2015, one-year grant, 
including but not limited to any amendments to said application and any final funding, grant documents, and any and all agreements and any amendments thereto with local service providers to implement grant and to refer to the Board of Finance for any necessary approvals or documentation. Second. Well, motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none. Uh, resolution is done. Referral left. Yes. 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 Chair votes yes. Motion passes. Seven sixteen. Award of contract two P fourteen twenty two. Analysis of communications systems and implementation of systems replacement to CDI Corporation doing business as L R Kimball for one hundred twelve thousand six hundred three dollars of authorization for mayor or acting mayor to execute any necessary documents. So moved. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Item number 17. Authorization for mayor or acting mayor to execute network access service agreement and any other documents necessary to effectuate said agreement between the City of Bristol and State of Connecticut. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Item 18. Resolution regarding approval to extend the intercommunity agreement for completion of fiscal year 2014 audit for the Tungsis Recycling Operating Committee. And there is a resolution to read. I want to read it. Okay. Whereas Bristol entered into an intercommunity agreement dated August 30th, 1994, with 12 other cities or towns creating and establishing an operating committee pursuant to Section 22A 221 of the General Statutes of Connecticut known as Tungsis Recycling Operating Committee, or TROC, whereas TROC's re purpose was to provide regional solid waste recycling services, whereas the intercommunity agreement provided that it would terminate on the occurrence of the 20th anniversary of its contract date, whereas the intercommunity agreement further provides that it may be amended by vote of the legislative bodies of the member communities, whereas TROC's prior contract with its recycling vendor, Murphy Road Recycling, LLC, ended as of June 30th, 2014, whereas as of July 1st, 2014, solid waste recycling services have been assumed by the individual member communities of TROC and the Bristol Resource Recovery Facility Operating Committee, BRRFOC, whereas there are end of year audits and other tasks associated with the winding down of TROC, including distribution of surplus funds to the communities, and whereas it is recommended the intercommunity agreement be extended the until completion of the fiscal year 2014 audit unless by majority vote of the communities the agreement is terminated earlier. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City of Bristol, acting by its City Council, votes in favor of extending the term of the intercommunity agreement until completion of the fiscal year 2014 audit, but in any event not later than December 31st, 2014. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none. Resolution. Starting there for a right. Well, I, I do have a question, Mayor. Can someone just maybe summarize in English what we just heard? Well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Schrock is an organization that essentially ceased to exist on the 1st of July. But there's closeout documentation that must be done, including the audit. And so this just allows the, uh, it's a continuation of the agreement that the city of Bristol entered into with the other communities uh, 20 years ago, just to allow a time period for that audit to be completed. So it's separate from anything else that we're dealing with, with Covanta or anything else? Yes, it is. OK, thank you. That's all. Any other discussion? Resolution, come back forward. Yes. 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 Chair of OTS, motion passes. And number 19. Award of contract 2P1470, engineering services for renovations to athletic track at Bristol Central High School to Castle Blues Associates Incorporated for $25,000 and authorization for mayor or acting mayor to execute any necessary documents. So moved. Second. Motion okay. granted. Second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 And number 20. Communication from the Board of Finance Donation Committee regarding waiving permit fees for the Bristol Historical Society. And this is just the referral back from, from the uh, Donation Committee. Mayor, I'm going to um, excuse myself for this item since I work part-time for the Historical Society. Okay. Mayor, uh, 
um, based on the report from uh, the, uh, the Board of Finance, including the memo of Attorney Krawicki, um, I would make a motion that um, because we uh, don't appear to have the authority to waive uh, building permit fees for um, something that isn't new construction, that we will not be acting on this and therefore we should send it back to the uh, donation committee of the finance board for, for them to provide some sort of donation to the historical society. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion. <coughs> I would just like to say, you know, I support uh, Councillor Fortier's motion because I think that, um, you know, we sought the opinion we needed on this particular issue and if it is a matter that belongs in the Board of Finance hands then it's important that we um, get it back to them as soon as possible so that the Bristol Historical Society can have their case heard and hopefully get any assistance that they may need. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. Can someone please get Councilwoman Zappel please? Yeah. Thank you. Your Honor? Yes. Uh, Kind of on the same topic, maybe I should have done this under. Not, not in the room? No, I don't think it matters. Okay. No. Uh, just generally speaking, now that we've cleared this issue up, I think it might be a good idea to strike the language from that uh, part of the ordinance that says, unless uh, designated by the City Council, to send that effect. Okay, move to send the ordinance. Second. Motion. Okay. Yeah, right. Council of example, motion was just made to uh, to remove, send right? to ordinance send to ordinance the uh, removal of the language unless as designated by the city council. So that's what we're voting on now. Motion was made and seconded. Okay. Just to go to ordinance for them to look at the language. Okay. okay. Um, any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes. Item number twenty one. Award of Contract 2C1467, Fuel Dispenser and Management System at the City Garage Facility to ETT Enterprises Incorporated for $74,600 and authorization for Mayor or Acting Mayor to execute any necessary documents. So moved. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item number 22. Is the consent calendar and there are three items, 19-119 through 18-123. Item 22B is to place on file the new hire report for July 2014 and item 22C is the approval of tax refunds dated August 5th, 2014. Motion. Approval. Motion second. Made. And seconded. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Addenda. Authorization from Mayor Kenneth B. Cockane or Acting Mayor to execute all documents related to sale of lot number four Southeast Bristol Business Park to GMN USALP for two hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars for development of high-tech manufacturing facilities. Second. Uh, motion for us. So moved. So moved. Seconded. Uh, let me see what this is. We already voted on this a couple months ago. This was just a uh, the corporation itself changed their name, so we had to change our paperwork to match it, so that's all this is. Any uh, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. Item number 23, 24, and then number two. And there are executive sessions. The first one is to discuss the litigation matter of Mark Whitford versus the Bristol Superior Court, docket number CB 14, 501, 5964S. The second is to discuss negotiations concerning the draft with Greater Bristol Chamber of Commerce Incorporated and the City of Bristol Marketing and Branding Agreement. And the third is to discuss post fee negotiations with the Band of Bristol. Mayor, on all of the items, uh, it'll be our office. Um, on the item number 24, however, um, the Executive Director of the Chamber is in the audience. Uh, since we're in the middle of negotiating that agreement and some of the terms are financial in nature, uh, I think uh, Mr. Albert is probably um, uh, making himself available to come in and also discuss uh, the reasons why the Chamber is taking the positions they have on some of the subject matters, um, if the Council would like to have him come in so that we can speed that process along in the discussion. So he's available. 
Um, and if you want to invite them in, you're certainly welcome to do so. Okay. We'll do 23, number two on the agenda, and then we'll take up to 24 last. Time. I'm sorry, uh, Mayor, on the agenda item, um, uh, Walter Bezalco is also going to come in because we're going to be discussing okay. those things. Okay. All right. Any more for the executive session? Point of order. No. I'm, I'm not sure that there's it's... no point of order, Sean. There's no point of order when we're going to executive session. Really? Because I'm not sure it's proper to go into executive session on this issue. Under under uh, which what one? under what part of um, in regarding to um, number 24 uh, regarding the Chamber of Commerce? What what part of Chapter 24 is this exempt from the Freedom of Information? The, the sections dealing with the uh, financial uh, uh, structure of the agreement and how uh, and what the uh, work will be included, uh, Mayor. It's not a public agency, though, so it wouldn't be covered, would it? Not that I want to engage in a conversation with a member of the public, uh, Mayor, without your permission, but uh, we've contacted the uh, director, uh, one of the uh, uh, advisors of the Freedom of Information Commission, uh, who indicated that uh, this is the type of a contract that uh, would allow us to um, uh, proceed on a quasi-public fashion and, and would be an appropriate item for us to uh, handle that one. Thank you. Can we have a motion? Uh, second. second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes.